In today's video, I'm going over my kayak setup that I use for better bow hunting opportunities. So let's get to it. My name is Clint Campbell and I run the Truth From The Stand deer hunting podcast where we talk all about bow hunting tricks, tips, and tactics. And today I'm going over my kayak setup that I'm using for water access. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button below and the bell notification so you make sure to get all the upcoming videos and podcasts. If you've ever listened to the podcast, I'm sure you've heard me or my guests talk about water access. Now, canoeing into places or kayaking into places isn't necessarily for everyone, but there are certainly some advantages when accessing hard to reach places on public land. Water access oftentimes will give you easier access into some hard to reach places. Water is a great deterrent to leave some of the folks on public land behind. A lot of folks aren't willing to traverse deeper waters, so a lot of times you can get away from, from the crowds. Maybe the most important is it allows you to access certain areas uh, with stealth. You might be able to slip into an area that maybe goes up an embankment, maybe 20 yards off the water. You might be in your tree and you're really kind of preserving that particular spot to be able to hunt it multiple times. And if nothing else, adding water access to your repertoire just adds a little bit of an adventure to a normal hunt during the course of the season. If you don't already own a canoe or a kayak or something for water access, there's a lot of things to consider when you're thinking about you know, picking something up or make, making a purchase. You know, for me, the first thing was overall the weight. I wanted to be able to handle this thing by myself. I didn't want to have to have a second person to help me load and un unload and maybe, you know, drag it through some, some timber or whatever the case is to get it in the water. The second thing was ultimately the length. I wanted to be able to use my truck to haul it, my normal truck bed. I have a Ram 1500 with a regular size bed. I think it's just a little under six foot. Uh, so I wanted to be able to haul it in that and didn't want to have to have a separate trailer to haul the, the kayak to and, from, uh, to and from my hunting spots. Three, I uh, prioritize stability over speed. You know, I'm going to be hauling some hunting gear in and out of places and presumably deer in and out of the woods. So I wanted to make sure that whatever I was going to have was going to be stable to be able to, to haul me. Also the weight rating, I wanted to make sure it could handle the weight of me, who's about 160-ish pounds, uh, plus the, you know, the, the, the body of a deer. The fourth and final thing I had to consider ultimately was I wanted to be able to put some type of motor on this so I could have some, some power to go longer distances or bring out, bring out heavy loads, uh, especially you know whenever you're hunting in cold weather like it is today. Later in the season, you tend to get a lot of higher winds, which makes it a lot, a lot tougher uh, paddling, especially if it's going to be long distances. So ultimately I ended up choosing a kayak. What I ended up going with was a new canoe F10. And so I'll walk you around the canoe and show you all the stuff that I have on it and how I have it set up. So let's give you the grand tour of the SS Whitetail, as I like to call it. Like I said, it is a new canoe F10 kayak. Um, it is 62 pounds, that is with nothing on it. So bear canoe is 62 pounds. 10 feet long so it fits nicely in the in the back of the truck it'll haul approximately 500 pounds so enough for me maybe one other person in some gear and at least me and a, and a whitetail coming out of the timbers it's about 39 inches wide and has room for two people i have one seat in it now but i have a second seat that way if i want to take my daughter fishing or something like that or spend a day on some on the water i can i can do that and it is set up or can be powered by at max a two and a half horsepower motor so let's go ahead and get into the the inner workings of the things i actually have have on it we'll start at the front of the of the kayak um, what i have here let me flip this around so you guys can see it what i have here is essentially a tether that i made with just some some webbing and put a carabiner on it this is what i use to tie myself off the trees so that way the kayak doesn't get away from me uh, whenever i when i dock it somewhere and walk into walk into hunt this essentially is just a, a, a watertight storage that you have a gasket around to keep water out of it. What I basically keep in this, you know, is going to be, you know, really just, you know, boots, things of that nature that I keep in here. Um, that way, whenever I finally get to wherever I'm going to be, I'll have some boots if I have, have, have some hiking to do. Some places I have to just wear hip waders in, extra flashlight. This little light here is what I stick on the kayak. That way other boats can see me while I'm in the water at dark. A lot of times I'm paddling in or kayaking in the dark. And then just an extra light. That way if I'm having a blood track or something like that, I have an extra light. If we move on back here uh, to the next thing I have, these are essentially gun mounts here. Um, what I do is I use these for my bow, of course, because I really don't do much gun hunting, but certainly can use these uh, while, I'm, while I'm bow hunting. So I stick my bow in this. This tether is essentially a piece of Dyneema that I have with a carabiner on it. And this actually clips into my bow 
and I run it through the strap of my backpack when I put my pack in the boat. Um, this is that way in case something happens where I roll the I roll the kayak over maybe or something like that, I don't lose all my gear that's in it. One of the nice things about the new canoe is it's got these tracks that run along the edge here that allows you to kind of stick your seat wherever you want. The other seat that I have just kind of clicks into these tracks. You know, it's really kind of convenient to be able to kind of move your seat around and be able to move around gear and, and so on and so forth. You're not kind of stuck like with a, with a canoe a lot of times. You're kind of stuck, you know, in place um, wherever the seat happens to be and in some cheaper uh, kayaks. You know, this this kayak, you know, was kind of expensive, but I'll get a lot of use out of it. It's a buy once, cry once type of thing. So those tracks are nice because you can kind of move your seat around and kind of organize things however you want. I'm actually probably set a little far back in this seat. Uh, technically speaking, I should probably be a little bit more uh, forward to, to balance the weight out, um, but it's worked well for me to, to this point. So. The other thing you have here are these straps along the side. This, uh, once I put my oar together, it straps in, goes around this little clip here and holds my oar in place. That way I don't lose it. You got some drink holders and stuff like that, some handles. Life jacket that is always in the kayak. Safety first, got to have the life jacket. It is a pain in the ass to wear over top of all your gear, but got to have it. Mama won't let me use the kayak without it, so. This seat here is pretty boss. Now this is a, an upgrade seat. So this is something that I picked up that was kind of in, a, in addition. It's a fusion seat, 360, so I can spin all the way around. I really got it because I, I didn't make an extension for my motor. So whenever I'm in the kayak, if I sit straight on, it's kind of hard for me to reach the, uh, the throttle for my motor. So what I do a lot of times is I'll sit off to the side and be able to reach it and, and, and maneuver the kayak around that way. So I got that seat for that. It'll lock in place as well. So seat super comfortable, especially if you've got some long rides in or if you're, if you're paddling in as well. Um, super comfy seat is kind of key uh, to getting in and out without having to, without having a, a pain in your back essentially. So big props on the seat. Move a little further back here and I have, you know, I guess the the brains behind this whole thing. I have a Minn Kota 30 power trolling motor, which is plenty enough or plenty power for me to get in and out of uh, in and out of the places I'm hunting. So a lot of times whenever I'm kayaking in, you know, when I first got this, I, I kayaked in, you know, whether it was in the summer, spring, whatever it was, and was hanging some trail cameras and kind of charted how far some of these places were. Some of them are short kind of distances. Some of them are long, you know, could be mile, two miles, whatever they are to get into the spots that I want to get into. And so for that during the summer, what I realized was, you know, it was taking me a lot longer to kayak in than I really wanted to. So a trolling motor was the perfect solution for me. I can kind of get in and out of most of my spots within like a half hour. Uh, and they could be anywhere from a mile to two miles uh, uh, kayaking in and then whatever the, whatever the hike is in. For that, what I have for, for power essentially is this battery box and what I have inside of it, I will show you here in one second. What I have here is a VMAX uh, marine battery, 12 volt a, uh, AGM battery. Um, it's worked well for me. It was rated well. Uh, I've not had any problems with it. It holds good power. Um, I got the battery box just because I wanted something to be able to kind of tote it around a little bit easier and not quite as much of a pain in the rear end whenever I was just using the battery itself. Um, and then I have a drip charger in the, in the, in the garage that I just kind of hook up to and uh, um, to make sure that it stays charged and doesn't die. The one other thing here that I want to show you that I did uh, to the motor just to kind of make sure it's secure, like the one thing I learned from watching other people on YouTube, they learned the lesson the hard way of having everything that you have tied down. I didn't have to learn the hard lesson. <laughs> I watched and learned from their misfortune. So let me flip this around and show you real quick. So the battery sits inside here and the, has tracks here as well. And so this kind of, these two straps go over top of it to make sure that it stays in there. But the other thing I did was took another piece of Dyneema with a carabiner and placed it around the motor through the, through the, like the, 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 the transom mount essentially and carabined it together. So it's kind of attached to <laughs> essentially this uh, this strap um, and, and shouldn't go anywhere if it were to fall off while I've uh, been kayaking because there's been a couple times where this has come loose. Actually this transom mount was something new. Previously I was doing it the old DIY way where I just cut a two by four or uh, I cut a two by four to fit in there and stuck it in there and that's what I was using as my block 
um, and it was kind of wiggling loose a couple different times and almost lost the motor uh, in a body of water. So I fixed that uh, pretty quickly after that. The other thing that I'll take with me on these trips, these things are super important. These are just some cheap Tidewe uh, hip waders. Uh, a lot of times whenever I'm getting started, I'll need to kind of wade in to launch it. And then I might need to kind of wade in to kind of pull it to, to, pull it to shore because it might have a bunch of debris or it might be a bunch of lily pads or whatever the case might be that are in my way and won't necessarily paddle through or it won't be able to use the motor to get through. Um, so a lot of times I'll have to kind of pull it to shore. And so I'll wear hip waders in and then in that watertight gasket or a watertight storage that I have, I'll have my hikers in there and I'll just throw those on and then hike into wherever I'm, wherever I'm hunting. The other thing that I changed out for this year, um, after a year of using it for the second year, was this. Got a different propeller on here that just does a better job of eating through, you know, different type of, you know, water plant life, whether it's, you know, algae, whether it's, you know, whether it's uh, lily pads or, you know, whatever the case is. I've just gotten the last pr prop that I had would get bound up in it. That seems to chew through it a lot better. Um, it's a little bit smoother of a ride too. So I put that on this year and this thing has been a tank. The only other thing I really have that I take along aside from my hunting gear is, you know, this. Essentially I have, I think this is a six foot oar. So these just snap together and go on the other side of the, the kayak. And then I'll use those to kind of get started if I know there's rocks in places or maybe there's stumps in places I need to get around and maybe I can't see really well at night, you know, or in, at night getting out or in the morning going in. Now, and I'll know that there's some debris in the way. I'll just use those, kind of get myself to a point to where I know I'm past all that stuff and then I'll throw the motor in the water and, uh, and then take off from there. So that is essentially the setup. If you want to see more of my hunting gear, you can check out the playlist with all my saddle gear. And until next time, thanks for watching.